elephant in the room is Section 23A of the Finance Act 2023. And that act says clearly that every person must raise an items invoice when they are doing their sales. I have had many conversations, oh, you do not have a parliament, you pass this, you do not know. To be very honest, it's a very, very simple and innocent statement in the Venus Act. Every person must raise an invoice through ATM system. It is taking us the system. But the implication when it comes to application of the ground, that's where Kizungu Mukuti Iko. And I would like to say this. Today we are here because of avocados. Today, tomorrow we will be here because of rice. The other day we will be here because of sugar. But I think we have one silver bullet. And the silver bullet is, there is nowhere in the world where agriculture, especially primary agriculture, is subjected to taxation. In fact, most countries, what they do is to subsidize their agriculture as opposed to taxing them. And therefore, we need to raise this occasion. And I think there is an error because in law, you I say there is, in every law, there must be an exception. The section 23 is an omnibus. Nile mtego ya panya. Inashika waliweko na wasio kuweko. And my proposal, and I put it, put it before Parliament, is that section 23 need to be amended with an exception that every person must raise an invoice through eating system except the prayers in primary agriculture. When you do a value addition, then you can raise your ITM, your ITM invoices. When you do the export, you can do the, the ITM invoices. But everybody, and I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about the, the avocados, I'm talking about everybody. Rice, maize, fish, whatever it is, bananas and everything else. Anybody in, in, except any, any activities in primary agriculture. That way, we shall protect our farmers. That way, we ensure that they grow more food for us, food is cheaper, and finally, and this is very key, you find coffee, tea, and all other milk, they are taxed at the cooperative level. And again, my position is that even that primary level, whereby a factory raises an items invoice when they're selling coffee, that need to be a done away with unless it is there's value addition. But if it's just raw coffee, there should never be any subjection. We don't subject our farmers to, the, to, to taxation. Now, finally, and I think this is very important because the section does not talk about taxation, the taxation but the imp implication of that, uh, that section is that farmers. Once they do that, then they'll be subjected to what we call turnover tax. That is where the issue is. And that's why we want to show those farmers. And finally, we remember, this Kenya Kwanzaa government, when we went out with the votes, and EEC Serikali Awongo, we told our people, our duty and responsibility when they give us an opportunity to lead them is put money in their pocket. Kwanza ningetaka kumshukuru naibu rais kwa sababu ya kuleta kongamano hili hapa siku ya leo tuweze kujadili wenye mtaweza kuokoa sekta ya ukulima sana sana kwa mama wa maparachichi. Eh mimi pia nikiwa mkulima nataka niseme ya kwamba ikifika ni mambo ya kulipa kondi Mkulima wa pale mwanzo anafaa kidogo kuachiliwa. Kwa nini nasema hivyo? Mimi kama mkulima na wakulima wenzangu walio kwa hapa. Kama ni mbolea ya ruzuku, subsidized fertilizer yenye imefika. Ukiuliza wakulima 
akakwambia hakuna mbolea ambayo imechanganyika imefanywa ime, ime formulation ambayo imekuwa ime ikienda kwao ili waweze kwa fertilizer inakuja mahindi majani chai lakini fertilizer ile inafaa kuwekwa hapo kando wamekuwa wakijitafutia wao wenyewe na kwa hivyo itakuwa ni makosa tukienda kukamua ngombe ambao wanatuja wapatia nyasi tukikata kondi itakuwa ni kama kukamua ngombe ambao wanatuja patia nyasi ningeomba kwanza tuweze kuweka taratibu zinazofaa kwanza katika ukulima wa mparachichi kabla tufike hapo katika kukata kondi we went through the finance bill and i think parliament's intention was not the taxing of farmers and it's something that I'll, t I'll tell you because clause 23a was mentioning about people being registered for ATMs and the reasoning was very simple that the people who come and claim refunds people who pay tax the big people they normally say that some of the people who are supplying them with avocados were not tax registered so they can't be able to trace and i think that was the intention another thing i wanted to clarify is that according to the tax act anyone earning less than 5 million shillings a year was not to be part shouldn't be part of that regime number 2 the people with tax even salary start from 24000 shillings so anyone earning that money when you multiply by 12 should not be paying any tax and i think one of the things that we look at when we are going into this finance act was we are going into the finance bill cycle is this clarity so that it is in black and white we cannot allow our farmers to be taxed and we cannot allow the people we are trying to support as a government to be the ones who are crying over tax so leave it to us i don't think it's about reading i think it's about interpretation and what happened when it went to the relevant authorities including kra thank you and god bless you thank you so much the question from the avocado farmers is are we really taxing the primary agriculture as far as maize is concerned? Are we also doing the same to the fish farmers because it is also there? Are we also doing the same to the livestock farmers from the eastern part of this country? And therefore we are asking why only farm and the, the avocado when you come to tea, you come to coffee, Waziri tomorrow you'll be coming to Morango constituency in Moranga County. And there is the issue of the commissioning of the coffee milling factory. They are also waiting for you to ask on the issue of the E-teams taxation as far as coffee is concerned. So when we talk of the primary agriculture, it is not only touching on the Afukandu, but it is touching on different crops that we have. And instead of having a lot of hura balus when we know we are not touching on others. Let us discuss, let us consult, and let us leave this podium having a resolution on what we are going to do so that maybe we can keep aside this. And uh, we recommend that the members of parliament to go and do an amendment to section 23 as it has been suggested by colleague. Thank you so much. That nobody among the exporters or the value chain actors is against payment of tax to the value chain upstream. We have a problem with tax implementation at the primary level. The exporters they are in will tell you they are already paying their taxes. They are submitting their returns. They are doing everything. What is disrupting us is that we are not able at the moment to receive produce from farmers for two reasons. One, the farmers need to give the exporters and the aggregators their PIN certificate, their PIN numbers. Mr. President, I want to, Deputy President, I want to say this, that the farmers have been told, if you give out your PIN, your land is being sold. For that reason, we are not able to get produce to fill containers, and our produce is stuck in the farms. This needs to be clarified. Number two, we deliberately reached out to some of the farmers and one of them is Faith and Wamboi from Kinyuri and Odaya from your backyard so that they are able to explain to you perhaps in the mother tongue in a language you can understand that this business is getting frustrated by virtue of the implementation of 
the Finance Act, particularly number 23, clause 23A, we are requesting this way, that we put on hold, suspend the implementation of that specific clause, praying that the members of parliament here present make true their request of amending that legal provision based on the legal provision through the parliament framework. If we get that, then we're in business. She has mentioned we have 158, 57 billion, we got this year. We are in danger, Deputy President. Our competitors who are our neighbors are taking advantage every day of every single blunder we do. And once they get to that market, we lose the market. Our exports for beans and peas have gone down instead of increasing. The only export that we are currently seeing an upward trend is avocado. We do not want to go that direction. We want to do anything humanly possible to support the country in ensuring this goes high. To Madam Sears, we have a challenge when it comes to market, and I'm happy Christine is here, and Sears, Chalugu is here. We do not have market budgets for market access. Piers, I'm sure you know the battle we had to go to Berlin this year. We did not give Christian peace. If we are not in a marketplace, we are not going to sell anything. The rest of the things we are doing here is a PR exercise. These exporters need to get to Berlin every February. We are going to May this year. Christian does not have a budget. And then when we go to the market, we have a kiosk in the name of a Kenyan stand. We have an embassy that has not been empowered. They can't do anything apart from talking to us. Out of 158, 57 billion we gave government through HCD, government has given us zero in return to develop the industry. Zero. We're not asking for too much. If you give us 1%, if you give us 2%, or you give us 3% of that money and say, please, go back and develop the industry, we can sit here one year down the line and we can demo demonstrate to you that this industry works. They have mentioned the issues of taxes. Beyond other things, we have a challenge. We are, these exporters are not getting tax refunds. Our biggest problem is 20th, which is tomorrow. We need an answer. Tomorrow, all these exporters must submit their returns to carry. If they don't, everything they have spent is going to be considered profit and not an expense. So an executive order, Whatever consultation needs to happen, needs to happen like yesterday. And that is what we're saying. We're glad that this meeting is here. ...sector, which we share with the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Cooperatives, you will realize that we have had a downward uh, trend in production and incomes. And that came as a result of uh, collapsing or rather uh, lack of focus on these value chains. We have value chains like coffee, tea, avocado, which is an emerging value chain, macadamia, which is also an emerging value chain. So all these value chains have had a downward trend. Yet, it touches every household in Kenya. It has potential of lifting up the incomes of many farmers across the country. And uh, when we did our analysis, including analysis done by the National Treasury. In looking at our exports and the exports potential, you've seen the Trade Minister here. We signed a, a European Partnership Agreement to access over 600 million people in Europe, 27 countries. There is need for us as a country to organize ourselves. There is need for us to organize ourselves in terms of production and post harvest management all the way to the farmer. And it's the reason why we have called you as stakeholders to meet today so that we can look at this issue as a country. We can look at this matter as a people because ultimately we will benefit those involved in logistics, those involved in uh, post-harvest management, and even those involved in the trade will benefit and our farmers will benefit.